Do you feel you have a disadvantage being British? No, I mean, I don't, I don't think so. Why, do, do you think I have a disadvantage being British? Sitting here with an incredible young drummer, my good friend, Josh Devine. How you doing, bro? What's up, bro? I'm good. How are you? Very good, thanks. Thanks for taking the time to do this, man. Thanks for having me. All right, big question. The biggest question on the internet right now. <laughs> okay. How did you get the One Direction gig? It's kind of a, a, random, a random time for me. I think it was a Wednesday morning. I must have woken up about 10 a.m. and I had this message on Facebook from this, this dude that I knew. He was in the industry in London. Um, he's a songwriter, he, he used to play guitar in a band and yeah, he actually wrote Lego House by Ed Sheeran. He oh, co-wrote co that and uh, yeah, he just said, oh hey dude, what are you doing on Saturday? So I was just kind of like half a seat going, uh, nothing. Like, I, I didn't have a job, I was just, you know, trying to break it in the drumming world, so I was trying to do everything I could. And he's like, oh, I may have a gig for you on TV, if, you, if, if, if you're honest, with this new boy band called One Direction. Um, yeah, so I, I vaguely remember them from The X Factor, uh, where they first started. I thought, yeah, well, I'm so down, like, you know, I've never played on TV before, I've never done, like, a huge, huge, like, TV show. I've played on radio, I've played with a rapper in the past, I did a few tours and stuff since, since I was about 16, 17, but I thought this could be just something really cool, if, if, if not, it's just bragging rights to my friends. I've been on TV. <laughs> so, yeah, he, he ran my picture through uh, the, the channel that it was going to be run for, and they were like, cool, he's perfect for the, the part, Let, let's get him in. So I turned up on the day played the song, which was What Makes You Beautiful, which I think was the first big, big, big hit. And I kind of thought that was that, so I thought like, cool, that was a great experience, like, what's next? I'm, I'm gonna see, you know, how, how I can make this lead onto something bigger and better. And uh, about a week later, I got a phone call from the MD, John. Actually, he, he, he rang <laughs> and he left a voicemail because I was having three or four phone calls from the local news and newspapers. But I didn't save their numbers and I didn't have John's number, so I just thought it was one of them. So I left it to go to voicemail. And he left this voicemail. And as I was listening to it, I was standing with my friend. And I was like, dude, listen to this. And he picked it up and hung up by accident. But it wasn't hung up, he deleted the, the voice message. <laughs> and what the voice message said was, hey, we're, we're actually looking to put a band together for the tour. Um, there's just going to be this like two month tour around the UK. Uh, and I don't know whether it was management or someone picked up on it and said, oh, he looks perfect for the part. Um, can he actually play the drums properly to, to, to play a tour? Um, but I managed to find his number again and ring him back. And yeah, then I went for an audition and it was like, I've never auditioned for anything in my life before. So it was like nerve wracking. I mean, you've probably done auditions before. You, your first one, you're kind of like, what the hell am I doing? It's a weird feeling. I, th I think I nailed the performance. John, the MD, seemed really happy, and there was another guy in there, Richard, who also seemed pretty happy as well. So, yeah, um, I got a call back a couple of days later. They're like, come for another audition. And I turned up, and there was two guitarists, two bass players, and me. So I'm standing around going, where's this other guy? Where's this guy that's like so sure that he had the gig, thinking I'm going to have to like, you know, fight someone for it again? And um, yeah, we just started playing, and for some reason, no other drummer turned up, so it was just me. There was a reason. Well. Yeah, that's what I found out afterwards. They, they just said, yeah, they'd, they'd made the decision from, from that moment when I played. They were like, that's who has to play for us, you know? Um, which is really cool, you know, because I'd, I'd met all the boys because I did all the stuff and I got on really well with them. And Harry actually stayed in touch with me between that and was just like, oh, cool, man. I hope, you know, I hope we see you on tour kind of thing. Just being not standoffish about it, but not trying to give anything away. And then, yeah, that day we found out that myself, the bass player Sandy and the guitar player Dan, we were the ones picked for it. So it was kind of Amazing. like a, a weird kind of relief. And I, I didn't really prepare for what was going to happen because it was just a two month tour. So we thought, oh, you know, it's going to be that and then it's done. Then I'm going to have to find another job, move on, try and build myself from there. And it just never, ever stopped, like ever until, well, until now. Um, like four years, right? Four and a half years, yeah. Wow. It just kind of spiraled out and it, looking back, it seems like such a blur. It seems like it happened over like a space of a year, but when I look back at videos and stuff, I keep getting reminded like, I did that, like, that's crazy. I went from doing nothing, my dad moaning at me every day for, you need to get a job, you need to do this, if the drumming doesn't work out in the next 10, you know, like 
10 days, you know, you've got to get yourself a job nine to five and, and, and clear out because you can't keep like living off us and all this kind of stuff, you know. I had like five bucks to my name, if that, some days. That's the repeating pattern that I see a lot from my friends, people I talk to, even in myself, it's that it can be one phone call. It's one moment that can change your path entirely. Mm, yeah, exactly. But something so drastic can happen in like the quickest little voicemail that your friend deletes. <laughs> Honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm never going to let him live it down. The look on my face when he did it, he was like, I thought it was a phone call, so I hung up. But the red button obviously means delete on a voicemail. <laughs> so I was, I was just like, you may have just blown my one shot to oh ever make it God. as a drummer. Oh man, you carried it. You did every show. Yeah, every single show. And whenever, for me, I'm not exactly the One Direction demographic, but what I always hear about is the live show and mm. the screaming. Oh yeah, man, that, that, that was killer. We, we all luckily run in ears and yeah. everything was, you, you know. I'm assuming you can definitely, because I've done a handful of shows close to that, but not from what I've seen. Unfortunately, I haven't never got to see one of the shows on the tour, but from uh, watching videos online, I've never experienced a crowd that loud before. No. You can definitely hear <laughs> that through your in-ears. Oh, dude, it picks, sure. it picks it up over the overheads. Of course, yeah. It, it's it's. So you have no crowd crazy. mic in your ears. <laughs> no, nothing. I can't, I can't even have their vocal mics in ears because they used to go out along like a thrust that went out the middle. Right. So obviously, if they're turned up, I can hear not only the PA coming back right. from like the, the time delay, just all the girls screaming. And yeah. it, it's, it's not like the every so often, it's like every single like millisecond you just hear, ah, I can't even scream. Before One Direction, what was the biggest gig you had, even if it's just a venue? I'd say five, six hundred people. So you went from like a club, yeah. straight into a theater tour, yeah. with an arena on it, so you, and then it just carried into the biggest tour of the year. Just arenas, yeah, arenas around the states and, and then stadiums, and it, it got like introduced steadily until we were yeah, playing, in, playing in stadiums around the world, and it's mental. It's so crazy, man. Yeah. You literally like, fate handed you the biggest gig in music. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Like, it's incredible. Yeah, it was just a huge blessing to my life, really. I was just like, this is crazy. I think you deserved it. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. You seem like a good dude. Thanks. I can't I tell, really. I could be horrible. You Probably are. Yeah, 99%. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> One thing few drummers get to experience is A, playing with pyro. Yeah. B, playing with a fireworks show shooting behind you. <laughs> yeah. Latency-wise, everything that's got to throw you off. What does that feel like? It does. You just got to ignore it. In, in, in my eyes, it's great. Um, but yeah, I, I suppose I never paid that much attention to it. The only ones that used to bother me was if it was a TV show and they had the ones that sprinkle down. Because mm -hmm. if it's sprinkled down on top of you, they say, don't ever look up. But of course, it starts happening. The first thing you do is this. So it's like it freaks you out. And all the, like, the actual like, smoke and stuff that gets blown across stage is pretty horrible. But Fireworks, there was only one time, actually no, there's probably a whole tour every single night actually. Uh, <laughs> that the very last one had like an air compressor hit that went with it. Yeah. All the fireworks get, get blown, but then the last one just goes bang. And dude, it used to scare everyone in the first 20 rows. <laughs> Everyone's faces were like, <laughs> even, even mine, I was, I was like, every night it got me. I couldn't prepare myself for it, it was, it was huge. So you're like, I don't even need a thumper on my throne. I just got a firework every time I hit the kick drum. Yeah, pretty much. So it's, it's like, but they could never quite time it perfectly. So we'd hit the last note and it'd be like, bang. So it'd be like, just, just after. So it was always, I could prepare myself once hitting. Like, so now, hiatus, you're doing your own thing. You're doing a solo project. It's a new venture, something different. I've always liked singing, but terrifies me. Mm -hmm. Like the fact that I might have to actually sing in front of a load of people scares the hell out of me. But I'll get over it, I'm sure. You may not. I may not. I may be terrified every night for the rest of my life. I've worked <laughs> with artists that I always thought they'd get over it and they just don't and they can be super su successful oh, and don't say that. could be years later. That could be you. It could be. I hope it's not. I really hope that I just kind of numb <laughs> to it. Oh. Just wear a drum set around you so you have like your safety drum set. Well, that's you. it. I think, I think if I just have like a little cage in front of me, then I'll feel you know, that's cool. Safe. A little cloak. Yeah, or just a mask. Dude, mask? Slipknot vibes. Dude, Slipknot vibes are dope. So, uh, my drum room is two blocks away. Oh, sweet, yeah. You wanna play? Only if we can just shuffle for hours. We can shuffle for hours. I'm down, dude, let's do it. Let's go. Let me finish the drink. No, I'm, let's go without your drink. Oh. I don't want, you're not gonna play your shuffle as tight. Too true. Let's go. Ugh. Actually, if you drink more, I'll be better. Let's just go. <laughs>